The Master Tavern Keepers, History of the Old World. And so that was the Battle of Talax, then. What happened in the aftermath? Well, the next day was very hectic indeed for the city. Marco II was up at the crack of dawn and conducted the final checks on the skinks who were to bring the pearls back to the encampment on the beach. As always, Winnie Pachutli helped with the uh, translating, but his help was also required in dealing with the devastation and subsequent clean-up, and uh, so this meant uh, he could not accompany Marco back to the uh, camp. Irrespective of this, Marco set off. He was eager to return to his men and show off the riches he had secured for them. Winnie Pachutli bid him a curt farewell, pointing a finger at a nearby group of dark elves who had been found and captured in the surrounding jungle, as uh, he did so. These uh, prisoners were currently being dragged up one of the sacrificial pyramids by a group of Saurus warriors. For so thick, they are not skaven, but so thick will take their blood nonetheless. I am needed here. Marco saluted and quickly left. He was not particularly eager to watch the uh, sacrificial rituals that would no doubt dominate the rest of the day, despite his uh, antipathy towards the dark elves. He turned to the jungle and his skink entourage once more bore him into the green depths upon his carrying chair. Marco told my grandpapa that the skinks covered the uh, 40 or so miles back to the camp very quickly indeed, despite the uh, load they bore on each of their backs. But as soon as Marco came within sight of the camp, he uh, alighted from his chair and walked the last hundred yards in order to make his uh, grand entrance and a uh, good impression upon his men. Zoviso, I think this is the point where we got up to earlier, yeah? Ah, yes indeed. That was when he showed off the huge pearls he had received to the uh, sailors, right? Yeah, yeah, uh, but the excitement of the day was far from done, though. A few hours later, mere moments after Marco completed his retelling of the week in Talax to my grandpapa and was taking a large sip of the vine he had received from the lizard men, there was an almighty commotion from outside the tent. Men were shouting and an almighty shrill roar came from the skies above. Marco and my grandpapa raced out to see a trio of pterodons attempting to land in the large open space in the camp. Some of uh, Marco's men were thrusting their spears towards the creatures, uh, with uh, Giovanni at the rear, encouraging them with his whip. Marco immediately noticed that each of the creatures bore a skink upon his back, and what's more, he knew the skinks. It was the two skink chiefs, Coppa Kettle and uh, What You Looking At, and uh, they were accompanying the interpreter, Huini Pachutli. Marco quickly ordered his men to stand down and allow the pterodons to land. Uh, Giovanni stamped off in a dark mood at having his fun cut short. The skink interpreter leapt from his beast and raced to Marco and my grandpapa with great 
haste. Eh, hey, we meet again. I'm so no soon. No time, warm blood. No time for pleasantries. Some of our foes have escaped. As we vanquished the enemy in the streets of Talax, some of their number were looting one of our outlying temples and have stolen many precious artifacts. The cowardly thieves fled during the cover of darkness, but were detected by our dawn skink patrols as they loaded our treasures onto one of their vessels. We had a deal, Marco Colombo. Will you make good upon your word, Mon Ami? Uh, 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 uh. We will catch these thieves for you and make them pay threefold with their own blood. Good. We have not been idle. Our pterodons quickly moved to intercept the sea serpent ship of the enemy and they were able to kill some of the elves by dropping rocks on their fragile heads as they tried to board their ship. Our ripodactyls, too, were able to kill some of the stragglers, but we could not get our beasts to land on the sea serpent. We dare not try and sink the elf vessel now that it is out at sea, for we risk losing our artifacts under the waves. But you, Marco Colombo, have ships. You must recover the artifacts for us. You made us a promise. See, si, see, si. indeed, I did. Fortunately, over the past week, my grandpapa had solely devoted himself to getting the ship's seaworthy once more, and all that really remained was to get aboard and haul anchor. The lizard men were in such a rush that they helped by carrying Marco and my grandpapa over to their ships on their pterodons. Uh, Giovanni refused and uh, came with the rest of the men in the air, uh, large rowing boats. Ah, ah, and just one uh, side note I want to add here, and this is fairly indicative of uh, Marco's character, which is why I mention it, but uh, in his official record of this first voyage, Marco claims that he was carried all the way from Talax to his ship by a pterodon. My grandpapa was uh, a little surprised when he first read this a few years later, but uh, when he thought on it, he told me that it was actually fairly typical of Marco. He always uh, stretched the truth a little when retelling his tales. Ah, uh, I think we can forgive him that. To be honest, it is not that unusual. As a tavern keeper, I get to hear all manner of tall tales, and the truth quotient in each diminishes every time it is told. Most of us do it, even if we don't know we are doing it. It's fine. Our memories are faulty, and our egos are greedy. Dear Neophytes, if you recall our very first lesson, I advised you to bring a questioning mind to our lessons. This is the reason. Hear. Think dissect and then reassemble let these words be your guidelines for learning and although the ale and the rum is flowing i dare say overflowing we are still learning here i don't know how much we'll remember in the morning though ah if only there was some way to uh, record all of this for posterity ah anyway yeah yeah don't worry live for the moment it is all we have and all we will ever have. Let us continue. So, so due to the uh, diligent preparations made during the previous week, the ships were able to haul anchor in short order and set sail. The three pterodons circled above leading Marco's vessels to the fleeing dark elf sea serpent. Uh, ahem! Uh, I'm sorry, I have another question. Yeah, yeah, senior apprentice. Were the Dark Elves actually riding a sea serpent? Is this some sort of hyperbole? The image that this conjures in my mind looks, um, I'm sorry to say, 
absurd. <laughs> ah, glad to see you've taken my advice to heart, Senior Apprentice Steiner. And you uh, are really starting to listen and question. But yes, anyway, to uh, answer your question, it was a real sea serpent. Heinrich, do you mind if I talk briefly about the fleets of the Dark Elves? As an old sailor myself, I cannot resist. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah. Ah, oh, by all means. I too want to uh, hear and learn more. <laughs> touche, touche. I know, I know. It's getting late, and you have a big day tomorrow down in the dungeon around the secret gate. I promise to keep this interjection brief and let you get on with your own story. Apologies again. Ah, no, 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 no. I am only teasing. I generally want to hear more. Our intrepid leader, Sven Hammerhelm, wants us to leave at dusk anyway. I have all tomorrow to sleep. It is a uh, fine. Please continue, Master Tavern Keeper. The elf Toralian has told me a few stories about the unusual ways that uh, dark elves plough through the waves, but I do not have the uh, whole picture in my head. Please, please, tell us more. Oh, uh, right then. Well, in that case, I'd uh, better wet my palate first. Get that keg open.